Well, it's already the most popular enduro model on the Australian market, and now the Yamaha WR450 has come in for a major overhaul. This new 2024 model adopts a lot of the changes that were applied to Yamaha's motocross range, particularly the YZ450 in 2023. There's wholesale change everywhere you look, so let's see what it's like. This is arguably the biggest single model change to the WR450F in over a decade. Taking the platform from the race winning YZ450F released in 2023 and tailoring it to enduro applications with slightly softer springs, mellower throttle mapping, a new exhaust and new level of adjustability via Yamaha's phone based power tuner app. The changes coincide with a steady increase in price for the WR, which has risen $650 to $18,000 right away. For what it's worth, that's $5,000 more than the new sticker price as recently as 2019. So we already know the outgoing WR450 is a race winner. In fact, it is the reigning Australian enduro champion. And coincidentally, we've come to the home of that very champion, Josh Green. We're in Stroud in New South Wales to put this new model to the test. Now I mentioned Josh because a lot of the development has actually happened in Australia out on trails and in racing in fact. So this has been a theme with the WR over 10, 15 years, but it's really taken effect with this latest model. So Yamaha's race team has been instrumental in developing this bike. So guys like Josh Green, guys like AJ Roberts have help develop individual components to help make it tailor-made for the Australian market. So as I mentioned before, it does take the YZ450 blueprint, but then applies a lot of change to make it more suited to enduro. So we have a bike that is two kilograms lighter, 117 kilograms wet. The proportions are tighter. It's slimmer through the radiator shrouds. It has a flat new seat and an all new design as well. So aside from you know, engine and other things, the basic ergonomics of this bike have changed quite a bit. Then Yamaha have basically gone and made more tweaks to make it better suited to trail. So they've lopped 10 millimeters from the fork, the actual fork body itself to make the bike lower in the front. Although the seat height says that it's higher than before, that's just from the point that they measure the seat. The seat itself is actually lower and flatter than before too. The foot pegs are 10 millimeters lower, yet the ground clearance has been raised 10 millimeters as well. The WR450F's engine is much like the YZ450F, employing the reverse cylinder concept that Yamaha introduced in 2010, but with a heap of weight carved out of it. The engine scores dry sump lubrication, a new exhaust and intake port shapes, a new crankshaft and balance assembly, larger diameter titanium intake valves, and a new piston and cylinder. The WR sends drive via an updated five-speed gearbox and a cable clutch, in what Yamaha says is a bid for more longevity. A hydraulic clutch can be purchased from Yamaha's parts catalogue. There's also been some other internal changes as well that will make this bike more manageable. That has been the brief from Yamaha. They want to make it a bike that's better at the higher end of the spectrum, but also a bike that is more approachable to everyday enduro riders. This bike has a very broad skill set. It has to do tight pinch points, it has to do grass tracks, it has to be suitable for high speed stuff. It's, it's a base for a think bike even. So, there is a lot of ground to cover and there have been a lot of changes, but we're really interested in jumping on today and taking a closer look. So the brief here when you take a step back at the new WR450 is that they wanted to create a bike that had a broader skill set than before. We know this is a really capable machine, Josh Green's proved that, along with a host of other decorated riders here in Australia in the Enduro Championship in recent years. But they wanted something that was better for beginner riders, but better for the advanced riders alike. We've just spent half a day, about 50 kilometers on this new machine in really challenging conditions here in Stroud. We had about 40, 50 millimeters of rain here yesterday, it tipped down this morning as well. So, there's definitely very little forgiveness out on these trails, but I have to say it was a really nice exercise to jump on this bike cold and to get a feel for it. Obviously in these conditions you need to kind of rein it in a little bit, you can't really attack corners the way that you'd like to, especially you know, even these grass tracks that we're riding at the moment, they're right on the side of the hill so you've got to really tread carefully. But once we were able to get a feel for the bike and really come to grips with its power, the way that the ergonomics worked and everything else, I've got to say it was really confidence inspiring. 
One little bit of feedback, so this has the FIM rear tyre on the back that makes it ADR compliant and registrable in Australia. So the knobs themselves are only 10 or 12 millimetres long. It's a lot shorter than a typical knobby tyre. So for that reason, when it was greasy, when it was muddy, when it was full of water, you're not quite getting the same amount of traction. That was especially the case on the grass trail. But then we moved into the single trail stuff. So you might remember from a couple of years ago, I rode the 2021 WR450. I had an absolute blast on that bike and I found that for trail riding, especially that fire trail stuff, it just ate it up. Really stable, confident, inspiring, lots of power and all the rest. When you got to single track stuff though, it just wasn't quite as sharp. It was hard to turn, you know, even standing up on trails, you felt like you had to muscle the thing around to get it to do what you wanted to do. The immediate takeaway with this new WR450 is that it feels much more nimble. Yes, you have slimmer ergonomics, you have a flatter seat that allows you to move your weight backwards and forwards, but just in general, the bike itself just feels a lot easier to navigate. You barely got to kind of look where you want to go and it's going that way. And that's a direct takeaway from this bike and I guess a, a nice link into the YZ450 because it is the same really, it's, it's the same characteristic. A lot of people have talked about the YZ450 getting a little bit of head shake, I don't know. I think when you have um, that firm suspension on the front, it's more susceptible to head shake. This obviously has a softer spring, so on, at higher speeds, I didn't really find the front nervous at all. In fact, it was kind of confidence inspiring. You could easily kind of open this engine up, third or fourth gear on those tight single trails if you had a nice straightaway, and at no point did it feel like it was gonna throw you into the weeds. That brings us to the engine. It is a cracker of an engine. Um, I found particularly its sweet spot was like that second or third gear tight single trail. It just has power exactly where you want it. It never conked out today once on me and I like to you know, really ride that rear brake so of course that is likely to invoke a little bit of conking out every now and then but it didn't do that. It just, you were able to come out, it wouldn't flame out, you could hold low RPMs and it just transitioned really nicely into the middling RPM and when you needed a little bit of snot for an immediate obstacle like a log jump or like a rotted up section of track, it just seemed to have that. It was never unwieldy, it was just the perfect amount of power. Those attributes are complemented by a traction control suite that is virtually imperceptible with its interventions and works really well in all settings. There's more potential to sweeten the engine for your riding style too, thanks to the Yamaha Power Tuner app. New functionality on the app allows you to create your own mapping and really tailor the WR for the terrain you're riding. So someone have said from Yamaha that this feels more like a 250 than a 250. That's not really a total, a total fabrication. It really does feel like a smaller capacity machine because you're not getting that typical engine inertia and it doesn't feel unwieldy in any way. It's not going to be mistaken for a two-stroke enduro bike on, on really hard enduro courses, but for 90% of the trails that Aussies ride, I'd have to say this is a great all-rounder. And that's my real takeaway from today. If you wanted one enduro machine that does it all, well, the new WR450 is a really convincing bit of kit.